کفر گروه دوی ادنیت اقضاعت دوشت دست آن اخمات سیوه الله اکبر هر گنتی مل دوی a group of Kremlin stooges from Chechnya had stopped to film a propaganda video somewhere in Ukraine, but were rudely interrupted by Ukrainian artillery. Several of the group could be seen ducking momentarily as the shell explodes in the background behind them. After being forced onto the back foot by recent Ukrainian advances, the Russian president has called up thousands of extra troops to join his faltering invasion effort. Speaking in the House of Commons this afternoon, Armed Forces Minister James Hiapi described how, rattled, Mr. Putin's action was an acknowledgement of Russia's failure. The partial mobilization, which applies to 300,000 military reservists, has forced the Kremlin to conduct a brutal crackdown of protests against the move in Russian cities. Mr. Hiapi, who noted how 25,000 Russians have already died during the Ukraine conflict, told MPs that Moscow was now condemning hundreds of thousands more troops to a miserable winter. Russian conscripts are going to suffer horribly for the Kremlin's hubris, the minister added. Ex-Prime Minister Boris Johnson, speaking in the same Commons debate, branded, weak, Mr. Putin as a, problem gambler, taking greater risks because he is, terrified of losing. The former Premier highlighted how the price of one-way plane tickets from Moscow to South Africa rocketed yesterday because potential Russian conscripts, have no desire to be sacrificed on the altar of his ego. At one point, Mr. Johnson misspoke and thanked the inspirational leadership of Vladimir Putin before quickly correcting himself and saying Volodymyr Zelensky. The Russian president's announcement of partial mobilization was accompanied by fresh threats of nuclear war towards Ukraine and its Western allies. But Mr. Hiapi today dismissed Mr. Putin's saber rattling as the act of a desperate man who knows this is not going his way. We believe that it is saber-rattling and we believe it is designed to try and put a wedge amongst the cohesion of the Western alliance and to deter us from supporting Ukraine at the exact moment Ukrainian troops seem to have the upper hand, he told MPs. The armed forces minister informed the Commons that Russia had suffered 25,000 dead with tens of thousands injured and tens of thousands more troops having deserted. He added that Mr. Putin had also seen his war machine suffer the destruction of 3,000 armored and protected vehicles, more than 400 artillery pieces decimated and scores of fixed-wing aircraft, helicopters and UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, downed. Seven months into this conflict, Russia lacks sufficient manpower in the field to achieve any of its objectives and the mood of Moscow is changing quickly, Mr. Hiapi said. He claimed the Russian president and the country's defense minister Sergei Shaigu had backed themselves into a corner. They have sent tens of thousands of their own citizens to their deaths, ill-equipped and badly led, the minister continued. They're now to send hundreds of thousands more with little training and no winter uniform into the teeth of the Ukrainian winter against an opponent that is well-motivated, well-equipped and succeeding. Neither Putin nor Shaigu's lies, threats and propaganda can disguise the truth. Russian conscripts are going to suffer horribly for the Kremlin's hubris. Mr. Johnson, who was widely praised for his efforts in supporting Ukraine while he was PM, told MPs that Britain must be prepared to give more military and economic assistance. At this turning point in the war, it is more vital than ever that we have the strategic patience to hold our nerve and ensure that the Ukrainians succeed in recapturing their territory, right to the borders of the 24th of February, he said and, if possible, to the pre-2014 boundaries because that is what international law demands. Mr. Johnson claimed Mr. Putin's mobilization order had caused panic among people about to be fed into the meat grinder of Putin's war zone. Yesterday, in a single day, the price of a one-way air ticket from Moscow to South Africa went up to $50,000, he added. Because those potential conscripts can see that what began as a war to rebuild the Soviet empire has collapsed into a shameful war to save Putin's face and they have no desire to be sacrificed on the altar of his ego. The partial mobilization is one of the reasons why I am here, he said. A very poor step it seems to be, and it can lead to lots of problems to lots of Russians. Russian state-owned pollsters say that more than 70% of Russians support what the Kremlin calls the special military operation, though polling leaked in July showed an even split between those who wanted to fighting to stop or continue. A tourism industry source told Reuters that there was desperation as people sought to find air tickets out of Russia. This is panic demand from people who are afraid they won't be able to leave the country later. People are buying tickets not caring where they fly to, the source said. Traffic arriving at Finland's eastern border with Russia, intensified, overnight, the Finnish border guard said. The number clearly has picked up. The Finnish border guard's head of international affairs, Madi Pitkaniati, told Reuters. 
adding that the situation was under control and border guards were ready at nine checkpoints. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you can be alerted to our next video. We'll see you again soon on Warzone.